My holy basil was getting huge and starting to flower, which means it's gonna make seeds. So I went out and harvested a lot of it. When you harvest to keep the plant going, you want to cut it right in front of a pair of leaves. So if this was my plant and I wanted to harvest this top bit, then I would cut it right there like that. And then each of these little things here, I broke that one, but it would be sticking up, will grow into another branch like this one. So if I cut off this middle one, these two would grow into new branches. Now my plant was way too large and it was shading out some of the peppers that I planted around it. So I had to cut it back pretty far. Holy basil has a lot of health benefits and it's a good thing to put into tea. So I'm gonna show you how to dry this for tea. So the first thing you wanna do after harvesting is wash it, rinse it off. Then the next thing I do is I remove the extra stem pieces because really I just need the leaves. I also remove these seed pieces. I'm afraid they'll make the tea bitter. Holy basil leaves are kind of minty in flavor and they make a nice addition to tea, but see all of this extra stem wouldn't be used anyway. And then what I do is I just lay these pieces into my dehydrator. Now when I take them out, when they're dried and brittle, I can easily just crumble them into a bell jar for um, airtight sealing, and then they'll be good for tea. Now I've tried air drying, and what happens with me with air drying in my house, I don't know if it's because I have an air conditioner or what's going on with that. I can't air dry outside because I live in a very humid climate and they would just mold if I put them outside. So I use a dehydrator because when I try air drying, they turn brown and I just think they're so much prettier green. I'm sure that the health benefits are the same or maybe even better uh, if you air dry because you're not using that heat that might destroy some of the chemicals, some of the good stuff. I have so many leaves that it may be wasteful, but if I see one with an imperfection, bug bites or anything like that, I just discard it and just use the pretty young, fresh looking leaves. It smells so good. fill my dehydrator pretty full. At first I used to do everything single layer, but a lot of things shrink when they dry and then I'd end up with these big gaps and wasted a lot of energy drying things single file. So now I pile them and if they don't dry very well, then I'll spread them out more and dry them a little longer. So here's my dehydrator. And now this plastic thing, I don't really need this plastic thing for these because they have large leaves, but I use that on the bottom layer quite often just to catch anything that falls down so it doesn't fall into the machine. I also use it when I'm drying anything small. I use it when I dry geranium. The leaves are large on geranium, but 
when you dry the flowers, they're itty bitty little petals that can fall through pretty easily. Now, if I was doing this to sell, if I was doing this for public consumption, I would be wearing gloves right now, but it's much easier to do this with your hands, not in gloves. And since these are just for me, for my tea, I'm perfectly happy with just washing my hands before processing. Now, I know a lot of people, when I watch videos, they're careful to dry their leaves. Like you can see they're all wet now because I just rinsed them. A lot of people dry them before putting them into a dehydrator. I'm not really sure what the reason for that is. I have done it that way before, but I don't really, I can't really tell any difference between that and just putting them in damp because the whole point is they're going to dry. Okay, maybe it takes a little longer if they're wet, but that's okay. Finally had some rain last night. First time in three weeks. And that was good, but it wasn't nearly enough. But at least it was enough that I didn't have to go out and water this morning. I don't have an irrigation system. I keep thinking I'll put one in. And it keeps not happening. So this one looks a bit chomped on so I am not going to use this one because I don't know if there could be anything in there or little microscopic eggs I can't see so I just don't use those all right that's pretty good so I'll put on the top and I'll put this outside and how long I run it depends if you're doing this, it just depends on your dehydrator. Mine is so old that it doesn't even have a temperature control on it. You just plug it in and it's on and you unplug it and it's off. And it runs pretty hot. So when people say that they dry stuff for eight or 10 or 12 hours, yeah, mine takes like an hour and a half. Uh, but depending on what you're drying, I mean, if you are have something that's already partially dry, like my next, set of this holy basil over here because I only did about half of what I harvested this is I'll, I'll rinse it and lay it out and it'll be pretty it'll be already partly dry when I do it so it won't take as long so here's my next set that I'll do and that's all rinse and I'll just toss it around a few times while the other one's drying let it air dry a bit and then I will let it take its turn in the dehydrator one thing I found out really by accident about dehydrating is I dehydrate a lot of flowers and herbs for tea and when I was processing these things my husband is very allergic to pollen and I mean, just looking at flowers makes him sneeze. And he developed this strange rash when I was dehydrating inside. So now I take it out on the front porch and run my dehydrator out there and we haven't had any more problems with it. All right, it's been in the dehydrator for 90 minutes. It's not crispy yet. It's very limp and damp. So it still needs more time in here. I shuffle the levels around and plug it back in and let it run a little bit longer. All right, here we are back here on the front porch again, checking out our dehydrator and, oh yeah, crispy, crunchy, just break apart, that's dry. So now I just need to take these in and put them into a bell, airtight bell jar.
so here we are. One run of holy basil and the leaves can be crushed a little more to make more room if I need to or start another jar. I generally, when I make fill my tea bags, I go ahead and crush the leaves anyway to help increase the um, surface area and let them let the good stuff come out of the leaves easier. When you make tea with any kind of these herbs, you want to put the hot water over the tea leaves and let them steep, let them sit in the hot water for about 10 minutes before removing the tea leaves. Happy growing and drying. Have a great summer. Please like and subscribe.